Body parts. They've been selling body parts. This is that's old. That's not new. That's why black people don't like to go to hospitals. They go to get their toes clipped, their fingernails clipped, and they wake up and their foot's gone. They've been utilizing the organs of black people for years. The organs and the, the body parts and the members of African American people. And that goes back to George Washington. There's a long time myth that George Washington had wooden teeth. We've, we've heard that myth growing up in school. The reality is George Washington did not have wooden teeth because common sense will tell you you can't put wood in your mouth, it gets wet and wet wood is useless. What George Washington did, he had the teeth of his African slaves yanked out of their mouths and he made dentures out of these teeth. And they're on display, his dentures are on display at museums right now. And that just goes to show the history of African people having our bodies mutilated and our members disfigured and mutilated for the betterment and benefit of the dominant society. In America, at least, at least 2,500 black people go missing every year. At least. Never to be found again, not killed enough, you just don't find them again. Why doesn't that number ever go down? How can you constantly have the same amount of people? Are you trying to say the same killers go out and murder the same amount of people every year? No. Somebody is taking black people off the street. There's been stories on this. Kidnapped by the government. Kidnapped by organ traffickers. Drive-by shooting is organ stealing. I'm worth $50 million and I need a kidney. And you know, kidneys are pretty sensitive. You gotta find somebody who really got the kidney that matches yours. You think I'm gonna wait till somebody die for me to get one? If I don't get one soon, I'm gonna die. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pay somebody to go research people. Okay, let's go look at all the black organ donors. Let's look at all the black people who got organ donor on their driver's license, which is why I'm not a friend of that. I say, if you want to donate your organs, put it in your will. Say that if I die, this can go to my family, my relatives, my friends, or whomever. But when you put it on your license, I believe you make yourself a public target. And so what did they find? We got a guy in Los Angeles. He has the same blood type as you, same kidney type as you likely. He, ain't, he healthy though, he ain't likely to die no time soon. He don't know you, so he ain't gonna give you no organ for free. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna arrange a murder that makes it look like he was in a car accident. We're gonna arrange a murder that make it look like he committed suicide. So the next thing you know, you coming out the gas station, boom, you get hit by a Mack truck, you dead, gone. You get taken to the funeral home, your family come to the funeral, they don't know that before your body got laid to rest, a little hole was poked and they poured your kidney out. A lot of people don't know, when you get arrested or even when you get convicted, a lot of times law enforcement or police will swab your mouth for DNA. And now they have your DNA record on file, they have your genetic information on file. And you have to understand with law enforcement, a lot of times they'll sell your information to tabloids and like especially celebrities, they sell their information to tabloids and magazines and news outlets all the time. So it's not a stretch to believe that they won't use your DNA or your genetic information for nefarious reasons. You, my son, cops come by and inform me you've just been shot dead. You don't have jurisdiction over that body. Hmm? That's the coroner. You can't get that body until the coroner release you. So we get released, we go down and pick it up, and I see all these cuts and these stitches. I just thought they was doing a read to an investigation, following the fact, I know they took your organs. Hmm? I'm under all this stress, my son is dead. Now you buried now, I can't dig you up because the court got to have permission. Most of those cases is organ stealing. It's been known for a long time, even back in slavery times, that black organs were considered superior genetically to other folks' organs. For example, whenever there's a transplant, okay, especially when rich folks get heart transplant, liver transplant, kidney transplant, they like white, they like black organs. We had a famous case in Pennsylvania, Governor Casey was one of the most racist governors who ever lived back in the 90, late 80s, early 90s. He had a heart transplant. Guess who heart they gave him? A black person's heart. Down in Georgia, there was a case of an African-American 17-year-old kid who was found mysteriously dead at school. He died in the gym, they did an autopsy, and they buried him. His family, they weren't satisfied with the results because they, they still wanted to know what happened to their son. They had the body exhumed, found out that 
His organs were missing and his body was stuffed with newspapers and people are still trying to find answers. The officials down there in Georgia, they act like they don't know what's going on. There was another case out here in California. A young African-American man was found dead in Death Valley in the, in, the, in the desert. All of his organs were missing. His liver, heart, lungs, kidneys, all gone. There's a case in, in the UK recently. A Somalian girl was brought over there for organ harvesting. They found out they were going to harvest her organs and they stopped that. There was another case in Asian couples. They went over to Africa. They adopted a black girl. Two weeks later, she was dead. So these cases of organ harvesting are just going on all over the world, and people are being real quiet about it. The Rodney King riots. <laughs> the cops arrested 18,213 black folks. They couldn't account for 10,000 of them. That's what happened in New Orleans. Remember when you saw those helicopters? They were picking up all them black babies and taking them up in the helicopter. And my husband and I sit down and said, we wouldn't have sent our son with them. I don't care who they was. We'd all died in the water together. We wouldn't have sent our baby up there. And they never got a bunch of those children back, as we all know. Organ harvesting in Africa, it's a business. In fact, they've set up so many sophisticated places around the so-called third world where there are nations like France England, New Zealand, Israel, all these places now are looking in the impoverished areas because in mostly in these impoverished areas like Brazil, uh, places in South Africa, uh, right here on this continent, wherever there's poverty, there's crime. And wherever there's crime, you know there's a lot of deaths and there's a lot of shooting. They are killing black people for their organs. Think about it. Organs are the only commodity that people must have to live that you cannot buy in a store. So if I am sick and I need a heart, I can't buy that. And we know all the problems with the fake hearts, that they can give a pacemaker to a bad heart. But what about when the heart needs to be replaced? You gotta find a match, and it ain't none on the donor list, and I'm worth $50 million, and I could care less about black people anyway? Guess what? Somebody gonna get shot in a drive-by. Switch over to Haiti. Uh, Jean Belrive, at the time, he was the prime minister at the time when Katie was hit with that earthquake that killed over 130,000 uh, brothers and sisters down there in that island. They had a report on CNN with Jean Belrive, and he said specifically that there was organ harvesting and child kidnapping going on. And we have already reports of a lot of trafficking, even of organ trafficking. Of organ trafficking? Yeah. Now? Now, already. Of the victims of the earthquake? Yeah. So, Do you know that for sure? Yeah, I know that for sure, and it was discussed in Montreal during the conference. If you live in Los Angeles and you want to adopt a black child, why not get one from Los Angeles? You have every age, every skin color, every hair type, whatever you want, it's here. Because black kids are not being adopted by black people. But instead, you want to go all the way to Ethiopia and get one. You want to go all the way to Haiti and get one after the earthquake. You want to go all the way to the Middle East and get one. And East Africa and a Middle Eastern country, I believe, are the two top countries for international adoption. Why? Because they have poor supervision and tracking processes. Once you get a baby from Ethiopia, and as we know, Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries on the continent. Once you get a baby from Ethiopia and bring them back to America, the Ethiopian government and their adoption agencies really don't have the technology or the resources to follow up and see what you're doing with that child. In fact, I've read articles on it where they say that after about six months, we never hear from the child again or the person who adopted them.